The role of central systems, according to Fodor, is the fixation of beliefs through non-demonstrative inference, that is, through induction, analogy, causal reasoning, and similar ways of thinking. Now, the fixation of belief, according to Fodor, is non-encapsulated, the reason being that when it comes to reasoning freely about matters in the world, every belief, desire, and assumption is in principle relevant to everything else and can influence everything else. This, of course, precludes any sort of encapsulation. To describe this holistic and interconnected nature of the central system, he uses the word isotropic. Now, just like Fodor tends to think of modules as analogous to reflexes, he tends to model the process in the central system after the activity of scientific inference. So Fodor says that everything that the scientist knows is, in principle, relevant to determining what else he ought to believe. In principle, our botany constrains our astronomy, if only we could think of ways to make them connect. Moreover, there are cases in which astronomical data have helped decide issues in archaeology, and uh, cases in which facts about solar physics uh, have on occasion helped clarify questions in evolutionary theory. So that when we reason about the world, we enter a domain of maximum generality, totally open-ended, and we can't really know ahead of time which kinds of evidence are going to be relevant to which kinds of beliefs. But this is exactly the opposite of modularity, where we have a fairly circumscribed domain of application and a very restricted set of inputs and outputs. In short, Fodor assigns to the central system pretty much the opposite of the properties of the modules. He says that the central system is non-domain specific, non-informationally encapsulated, and holistic. This has very important consequences for Fodor, who thinks that we only stand a chance of understanding scientifically a system if it is encapsulated. So he says, I should like to propose a generalization, one which I fondly hope will someday come to be known as Fodor's first law of the non-existence of cognitive science. It goes like this, the more global, that is, e.g. the more isotropic a cognitive process is, the less anybody understands it. That means that, in Fodor's view, higher-level cognition won't ever be understood with the tools of cognitive science, since there are no algorithmic-level and implementation-level accounts of it. However, and needless to say, many people, most people, I should say, disagree with Fodor. Evolutionary psychologists, for instance, think that it is possible to give scientific accounts of central cognition. And this takes us to the next topic. So, if you remember, then um, for the main points about modularity, so we have a distinction between input-output or peripheral systems versus central. And the peripheral systems um, are going to be modular. That is, uh, they are domain-specific, mandatory, fast, encapsulated, they have shallow outputs and have characteristic patterns of breakdown. And among this, language is an input-output device. All the people besides Fodor have taken up the concept of module. However, their notion of a module tends to differ from the original Fodorian view. For instance, people like Peter Carruthers, Steven Pinker, the evolutionary psychologists, Cosmides and Tubi, and others, have postulated that modularity is not, confi is not confined to input-output systems but also extends to the central system. So, for instance, they have postulated modules for theory of mind, folk biology, folk physics, and many other areas. So we can classify stances towards the modularity of the mind by means of a few questions. We can start by asking, is the mind at all modular? That is, does the mind contain anything that might be called a module? Those who say yes may differ in terms of the extent of modularity that they are willing to assume. So we can ask whether the mind has any central modules. We know that Fodor says no, since the only modules he admits correspond to input-output systems. However, other authors such as Steven Pinker, Peter Carruthers, and the evolutionary psychologists are willing to contemplate modularity at the central level as well. Some of these authors hold what is called the massive modularity thesis which is a hypothesis that the human mind is largely or entirely composed from a great many modules. However, some of these modules won't have all the characteristics of Fodorian modules. 
For instance, some of these central modules are assumed to be conceptual rather than perceptual. And although they are domain-specific, they are not necessarily fast or mandatory or even encapsulated. Well, this ends our preliminary review of the notion of modularity.